um, Swedish energy efficiency policy addresses several uh, overarching goals, uh, sustainability, security of supply, and competitiveness. Um, this has probably to do with the very definition of energy efficiency, which says that you can keep on doing what you do with less resource input. input. So it's a very popular policy instrument. Um, what you can say about the, these three goals is that sustainability has be, been the most dominant one and prominent one during the later decades or so, while security of supply and competitiveness is always there as a background and has been there for many decades. Uh, what is not included in energy efficiency policy in Sweden is what is uh, in Britain called fuel poverty. Uh, this in Sweden, uh, the government says that uh, problems with poverty and things like that is outside the energy policy. We do that with other measures. Taxes are important, of course, as in many countries. Um, I don't want you to remember all these numbers here, but uh, perhaps you can look at the very last row. It's very uh, low tax for industry. And this shows that there are some go conflict of goals. Uh, in order to keep industrial competitiveness, you cannot raise taxes as much as you perhaps would have done. Um, energy taxes, when you compare different countries, you could perhaps say that um, Sweden is more uh, tax interested <laughs> than uh, the European average and Denmark even more. Uh, but uh, you have to uh, also look at w what happens uh, in, for other reasons, for other causes than from tax policies and other uh, policy instruments, including market fluctuations and market trends. So you have to look at what happens and uh, w what is the purpose of, uh, of tax policy in, in, uh, in favor of energy efficiency. Uh, relative prices. You can see here the, the prices for district heating is as a lower trend than for electric heating, and this is the purpose. There are, of course, other policy instruments made use of in Sweden. Uh, perhaps I could emphasize minimum energy performance standards. Eco design is very popular, so to speak, in Swedish energy policy. Um, also public procurement, and this could be also be seen as a way of uh, innovation support, because you can buy up uh, new types of technologies uh, made use of in buildings and uh, other places. Uh, I, perhaps I could say words about a special program uh, for industry. Uh, you may recall the low tax, electricity tax for industry in Sweden. Uh, this was introduced uh, some, uh, in 2004, I guess. Uh, and this, despite the smallness of this tax, it had a um, great impact because um, the government introduced uh, if this program, pro program for improving energy efficiency in energy intensive industries. Uh, and when industries accepted this, it is a voluntary agreement, uh, they were exempted from this small tax. And many industrial firms uh, did this. Uh, in the first period, uh, more than 100. 
and you can see a, a 1.45 terawatt hours were saved. So it, it is very um, successful. And it's the, the one point I think you can learn from this is that it's sensitive to the specific, specific circumstances in each industry. And you imp uh, introduce um, the, the interest in energy savings. You get introduce management systems that uh, the industrial firms themselves are interested in uh, finding energy efficiency measures. Uh, they help the introduce routines. Um, so this is another way to internalize uh, the interest of en for energy efficiency. Um, the energy, in uh, if we, in Sweden we have an energy intensity target uh, related to uh, how do you, how do we uh, get to the energy efficiency, general efficiency uh, goal. So we have an energy intensity target, and it's energy really related to GDP volume. Notice that. And the, the definition of uh, energy here is final energy plus um, international transport. So it's not only final energy, but also international transport. And as you can see, the lowest the straight line there from uh, means the target it shows the target. It's a 20 percent reduction from 2008 to 2020. This has not been reached. And as you can see, uh, the last year in the graph here is a small upturn. I don't know <laughs> what it the reason for this, but well, this is the target, and we haven't reached it yet. Uh, more specifically, in, in some sectors here, you can see that the oil and electricity use per produced unit in industry has, uh, firstly, oil has been reduced, and secondly, um, electricity. But it's also difficult to know whether this is true uh, energy efficiency effects or if it's structural effects. This is very complicated to know. Because if you shut down some chemical factory, this is not energy efficiency, really. You have moved, probably, the chemical production um, to another country. Um, this is, you don't move houses. <laughs> so this is probably true. Uh, uh, heating per floor area has been reduced. After stagnation period in the 90s, it has uh, con continued to improve. Uh, average fuel consumption for new cars, new cars only. So what happens to the car stock? This is much bigger. Uh, and as far as I know, uh, the average age of the car in the car stock is nine years in Sweden. So I would guess if the sales are, are continuing as it has been before, it would mean that it takes about 20 years for this new car level, um, energy performance level to be the general level. Uh, and <clears throat> when you talk about policy instruments in regard to energy efficiency, there is always a mixture. We have um, fuel prices influenced by, by taxes, but we have also in Sweden a, one instrument called promotion of clean cars, uh, and uh, we have uh, differentiated the vehicle tax. This is not the fuel tax, but the vehicle tax, according to what, how much uh, carbon is emitted. And there is a tax exemption for, uh, on vehicle tax for so-called clean vehicles uh, for five years. 
and the definition of the clean vehicle is, uh, well, today it's 120 grams uh, carbon dioxide emission per kilometer. It may be changing soon. Uh, so if climate, if the climate change problem is one of the overarching goals for uh, energy efficiency policies in Sweden, this graph may be of interest uh, and relevant. And it shows that, well, as the government says, we should be neutral. So the sinks below the zero <laughs> line here should be equal to the emission. And we, I, I guess we are getting closer to that. But Sweden, as many other countries present here in this conference, are small. And as far as if uh, sustainability in climate problem is the big problem to be addressed and solved by energy efficiency, well, Sweden has not very much to do. If we are, even if we were the best country in the world, we cannot do very much. We have only 0.1% of all uh, carbon dioxide emissions and only 0.4% of total world energy use. So we have to cooperate. And as you can see, the EU and even more if you include EEA, we get a, a considerable amount of emissions and energy use. I would like to end with a, a, a graph that um, uh, point both at pessimism and optimism. Because um, you have human development index on that axis and the use of um, energy per in inhabitant on the other. And my point is that many of the so-called poor countries are moving up towards index one, which is maximum. But on the other hand, and this is a, a problem for, for uh, sustainability. On the other hand, there are great disc discrepancies, differences among the rich countries. So there may be a, a big potential for energy savings in the world. Thank you. <laughs>